Hey, welcome to the second video in my Intermediate Minesweeper Strategy series. Um, I will have a link to the previous one uh, if you haven't seen that, um, but it is on my page and everything, to which you should subscribe. I think I'm supposed to say that on YouTube. Um, in this video, we will be looking at what I call extensions of the basic patterns that we went over in the beginning a series of strategy videos and that kind of just means that those at least a lot of those patterns were uh, technically special cases of more general patterns um, it's just easier to see them uh, in the most simple form uh, you can think of this as kind of extending those one-dimensional patterns along a wall to two dimensions where you have um, sort of two walls on each side you could call it a tunnel this doesn't make sense but you'll see when I show you here we go all right so here is what I'm talking about in the beginning strategy videos, one of the first patterns that I discussed where you have to look at more than one square at a time is what I call the 1-1 one, one pattern uh, against a wall. And it basically is, as the name suggests, two ones next to each other along what I call a wall, uh, just a series of three covered uh, squares that um, go parallel to the direction of the ones. And if you remember, if you have a 1-1 one, one along a wall and this is all open, um, which would make it a wall, this is kind of just a little cave here. Um, if you've got a wall here and this hall is open sky, then that means that this uh, square is safe and you could click on it. But uh, it turns out we're in two dimensions now, uh, meaning we have a one and a one next to each other, but it's not open sky up here. Uh, there's what you consider a wall here and a wall here. So you're sort of in a tunnel, whatever you want to call it. The point is uh, now in two dimensions, this one, one pattern uh, helps us even more. The logic is the same. Uh, this one on the far left uh, on the edge of the board means that one of these four squares is going to be a mine. That means that this one is touching its one mine in these four squares here. So the other three squares, covered squares, that this one is touching cannot be mines. If any of them were, then this one would be touching two. One here and one in uh, these four. So you can go ahead and just uh, click all three of these open. And you know, you saw a three there first, that might be a little scary. Uh, there's a lot of mines around that, but uh, don't worry, the one above and below are always going to be open. It's the same logic as we saw in the beginning videos, just in two dimensions. So you get to open even more squares. Uh, as we'll see in a moment, you can do that with other patterns as well. All right, uh, here we have a similar situation. Uh, when we had a 2-2 two -two, uh, along a wall, the 2-2 two -two pattern, uh, if we imagine that this was the wall, meaning that all this up here was open sky, uh, these four specifically were open, uh, and you have a 2-2 two -two up against an edge, that means that the first two uh, squares on the wall were definitely mines, like that. Obviously here though, uh, it's slightly different because um, in two dimensions, this two, like that one before, is touching four squares. So among these four, there are two mines somewhere. It might be these two, but it could just as easily be these two or you know those two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all the permutations. So we can't mark any mines here uh, because we don't know uh, where they are, but this actually turns out to be um, basically the same as the 1-1 one, one combination, because this 2 uh, touching two mines among these four, and this 2 um, will be touching, is already touching obviously those same four mines, um, sorry, same four covered squares which contain two mines, which are all the mines that this uh, two can be touching, so that means that none of these three covered squares that the second two is touching can be mines. So just like with the one one in a tunnel, you can go ahead and open all of those. Easy peasy, uh, same idea, just know that it's there. 
Great, uh, we've got another pattern here that we can uh, work on. There's a one-two-one pattern, which is a very common one. Um, we're skipping over the one-two, because if all you have is a one and a two, uh, it turns out in two dimensions that's not quite super helpful, so you're gonna have to just guess or go somewhere else or whatever. But if you have the one-two-one combination, in one dimension, where if this is the only wall of covered squares and all this is open sky up here, hopefully you'll remember that you can put a flag under the two ones and then open this one and this one. So that's awesome, hope you remember that. In two dimensions, kind of like with the two two, we can't yet mark any uh, squares as mines for sure, but we have five squares that we can mark as safe and open up, uncover. It's, as you can imagine, quite similar logic to the one-dimensional one to one This one here um, is touching one square, uh, one mine among these four covered squares. This two is obviously touching those same four covered squares, so one of its two mines is among those, and so one of these two must be this green two's second mine. Remember, this one means that there's a mine either up here or down there, just one of those four squares. And that two uh, will be touching that mine, whether it's up here or down here. And the only other two squares that the two is touching are these two. So one of these two must be a mine. And now you see that there's a one in between them. So if one of them is a mine, we don't know which, again, we can't mark any of them, but that one is touching five covered squares that are not a mine. We know that because one of these has to be, and the one is only touching one mine total, so the other five covered squares that it's touching, none of them can be mines. So you can go ahead and uncover that one, that one, that one, that one, and if that hadn't been a zero that opened up a bunch more, that one as well. Oh, I think I was on the wrong square. Uh, you get the idea. So the one to one pattern is uh, very handy in that two-dimensional tunnel uh, situation. Uh, again, just to recap, here's a one-two-one one up here, and in one dimension, you can mark those two and open that one, and same thing up here, there's a one-two-one, one, you can open that one, etc., etc. So, again, this one-two-one one pattern uh, extends into two dimensions. So that will be enough. Uh, there are a few kind of similar ideas, but those are definitely the ones that come up the most. The 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, and a 1-2-1 one, one in, as I called it, kind of a tunnel, where you have a two-dimensional analysis um, of squares you're looking at instead of just one wall, uh, straight one-dimensional analysis. And if those words confuse you, just whatever, go back and look at the examples. Uh, the point is, uh, those simple patterns that we learned before, if you just extend them in creative ways, you can start figuring out all kinds of very interesting ways to proceed in situations you might have thought were completely impossible to know where to go for sure. So that is the end of this video, and I hope it helps. Please leave me any comments or questions or let me know what makes zero sense, and good luck finding those mines.